This video addresses North Carolina Math Standard 5 NF1. Add and subtract fractions with unlike denominators, including mixed numbers, using related fractions. Fractions are related when one denominator is a multiple of the other. Related fractions for this standard are limited to halves, fourths, and eighths, thirds, sixths, and twelfths, and fifths, tenths, and hundredths. The focus of this video is on making the connection between using models to add and subtract and the algorithm for adding and subtracting fractions. When computing fractions, students tend to rely on whatever strategy is first taught. For this reason, introduction to the algorithm is delayed. Rather, the focus is on visualizing and understanding the concept of addition and subtraction of fractions with unlike denominators. In fifth grade, students use models such as circle models, bar models, and length models to create equivalent fractions and create common denominators when adding and subtracting. After students work, they discuss the efficiency of strategies and begin to develop an algorithm for adding and subtracting fractions. Although fifth graders begin to develop this algorithm, it does not need to be mastered until sixth grade. Let's examine an approach for helping students make a connection between using models to find common denominators when adding and subtracting fractions and the algorithm for adding and subtracting fractions with unlike denominators. This problem calls for us to add one third plus four sixths. To represent this problem, we could use paper folding. Here is my one third. Here is my four sixths. As we prepare to add, we notice that all of these pieces are not sixths, nor are they all thirds. Before we add, we need to find a common name, a common denominator. Hmm, I know that six and three are related, in fact, I know 6 is a multiple of 3. Let's see. If I double the parts in this fraction, 1 third, my denominator will change from thirds to sixths. Now, 6 is my denominator. 6 is my common denominator. Wait a second. Look what just happened here to the part that I shaded. Now there are two parts shaded. I didn't color anything extra, so what happened? Well, when I doubled the total number of parts, it ended up doubling the pieces that were shaded. I didn't change the amount, I only changed its look. This fraction changed to 2 sixths. Now I can easily add these two fractions because they have a common name, a common denominator. The sum is 6 sixths, or I can call that one whole. Let's look at what just happened once more, this time only using numerals. I needed to change one of these fractions so there would be a common denominator. I knew I could change the thirds to six. I did this by doubling the total number of pieces in the fraction. This means I doubled the denominator or multiplied it by two. When I doubled the total number of parts, it also ended up doubling the pieces that were shaded. I went from one piece that was shaded to two pieces shaded. So that means I doubled or multiplied by two the number of pieces shaded, giving me two six. Look, we ended up multiplying by two halves. In third and fourth grade, we learned that any time a fraction has the same numerator and denominator, this fraction is equal to 1. Therefore, when we multiplied by 2 halves, we were really just multiplying by 1. We know that any number multiplied by 1 is equal to that original number. Therefore, when we multiplied by 2 halves, or 1, it changed the look of the fraction, but it didn't actually change its value. Today and every day, we can create equivalent fractions by multiplying by a fraction equal to 1. This creates common denominators without changing our original fraction's value, so that we can easily add and subtract.